away you. with this topic. Okay, thank you, Claire. Okay, Janine. So when she is forward folding, um, and she's got more of an anterior pelvic tilt and she's got the load of her body helping her forward. Um, when she's sitting down, her hamstrings are restricted. So she hasn't got that load aiding because I think she has got hamstring um, stiffness or, or restriction. So that definitely is gonna come into play as soon as you sit down and open the legs. Um, so I think her hamstrings are definitely playing a, playing a part there. Her hamstrings are playing a part regardless, but in one instant, she has not got flexible hamstrings. She's probably, her range, I asked her to do a supine hamstring thing, but she didn't get around to it. Her range, I would say, is oh, it's way, way less than your normal. 90 degrees way less so her hamstrings are definitely playing a part in it but what we're trying to pull apart is why does it seem in terms of what we see and what she feels easier for her to touch the ground than it is for her to touch her toes in a seated board bench so we're looking at the difference between standing and seating so we've come up with gravity we've come up with load what else is going on, Roxy? Um, it was maybe just to add on the load that the, she's putting more um, load and weight on the, onto the toes, whereas when she's on the floor, her feet are not putting any load. So obviously being in Prasarita, she can really kind of transfer the weight from her heels to her toes and lean forward a little more, but that's still loading, right? It's still, it's still loading. She, she would just be, you know, often we see as teachers, we see people in Prasarita and they often leaning back a little bit, right? With their hips and then we can take them forward a little bit. All ranges are really good, but we the reason that they're leaning back is to stop them falling on their face. <laughs> it's literally the body's just going, whoa, you're going forward. Nah, I'm going back again. So she would lean back and forth, and the more she leans forward, the more her center of mass, her center of mass will change, and the more the pull is of her anterior tilt. So what I want you to then think is, okay, what else is happening? Ava, I'm gonna to get to you and then Anya. What else is happening in the standing forward bend for her that isn't able to happen in the seated forward bend because there is less load and there is the gravity is different? What else is happening? Maybe something with the arms. That? Maybe something with the arms, like, Maybe the gravity, I mean, that's again gravity, maybe the flexion of the shoulders, or I'm trying to think how maybe the chest or the neck or the arms could play a bigger role being upside down from Prasarita to being seated. Take it a little bit further. What else? So you've gone to, you've got, we've, so we've looked at, <laughs> we've looked at where are the feet, how much are you leaning forward? We've looked at the pull, the gravity, the weight, the load, we've worked out that her pelvis is tilting a little bit more. She's doing more hip flexion, right? In that pose than she is when she's doing a seated pose, but what else is helping her to get to the ground? As Maybe much she, uh, Ava, elongating the, yeah. okay, okay. No, 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 it's okay. Ava's just had a hand up for a while. Can you hear me, Ava? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I, I can't answer. I don't want to answer to that uh, to where we go now. Maybe I was just thinking. Maybe it's also the shape of her um, her bones that maybe how the femur femur connects to the hip and how the hip the acetabulum itself is um, shaped and the hip is um, shaped as well. That if she is sitting on it, there might be some bones which cannot move the same way as they can free in the air so that um yeah that that, that the the ground underneath her is restriction restricting how the pelvis can move okay so what okay let me put it to you like this if we've mimicked the exact same rotation so hip flexion and we've looked at, you know, her femur heads, the femur head, the acetabulum, the ass. So we're talking about for 
guys that don't know those words, so we're talking about the head of your leg bone and the socket, right? That some people can go further forward than others, some people can go mostly abduction out to the side than others. We've talked a little bit about that and we'll talk a lot more about it in the hip. So my question to you is if the rotation is the same, the only thing we can definitely tell that's different is load, gravity, all of this. If I went up to her and pulled her, so I became an equal load to the gravity load of her suspended in midair. Do you think she would move into the same shape as she's doing standing up? Could, possibly, maybe. Who's no. on? Put your hand up. <laughs> I, do you think? You, you, it's fine. Uh, Emma? Oh, yeah. So, hi. <laughs> so what, what I think um, plays a big role here is the fact that she isn't actively using her hamstrings when she's seated, whereas you'd obviously be using your hamstrings when you are standing. And she, you know, um, you spoke quite a lot about that eccentric lengthening. Um, so I think that plays a role, the fact that she's actually stretching while using her muscles when she's in this gravity position. Um, and that's why she tends to touch her hand, I mean, touch the floor. Um, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> We're just standing. <laughs> I'm going to sh demonstrate some, what she looks like on the floor, and I'm going to do the same when we're standing up. I'm not going to do her, but can you all see me if I sit on the floor? Can yeah. you? Yeah, okay. So this is her version, right? So what's happening? My hamstrings, what Emma's saying is right. She, she, and she says in the video, I can't even feel my hamstrings. She says, I can feel here, my abs, and it's tight here. What is my pelvis doing here? What do? Posterior Posterior She cannot move forward. She cannot, she literally is stuck like this. And the only reason she's staying upright, sort of, is because her abdominals are on. Because if they weren't, she'd just go back and fold up. Now, if I mimic the same thing here. Tell me if it's a good mimic or not. I can't tell. My hamstrings aren't moving either, right? Can you see? It's the same shape. They're not moving either. So the only reason her hamstrings are able to move if she was lowering down, not being isometric, into being stretched is because there's more anterior tilt at the pelvis. And what, so the anterior tilt at the pelvis, can we produce that same anterior tilt? If the anterior tilt is being aided by load, by weight, like somebody pulling you, right? Could we do the same thing seated? Or is it something else going on? See, it's such a brilliant conversation. For me, anyway. I'm yeah. Um, I wonder, is it also um, to do with space in her spine? Because it's, I'm just looking at you doing it again, and her spine is quite rounded. So if she, you know, if there's more space, she can get a little bit more forward. Okay. And that would help with her. We've got this. Okay. So then what we've got is we've got the, the, the joint mechanisms going. So what's happening is, when she's in a seated forward bend, there is no pull. There's no force, okay? There's no load, right? Because she, she can't even get into the basic shape of moving towards an anterior tilt, okay? An anterior tilt, pelvic tilt, we'll talk a lot about it in pelvis. It's, it's, I'm talking about hip flexion, like going forward and hip. She can't even move it because her pelvis is stuck on the floor, right? It's wedged on the floor and she can't move it. But when she's in space, as Ava was saying, and then we add a load, oh, she is the load. And I've just told you that her upper body and her arms are probably, she's like a 
more like a guy, right? Not Ashton, I don't know what your body looks like, so I'm not saying it's all guys, but she's got little skinny legs. Not that all guys have skinny legs. I'm sure yours are lovely, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the proportions are normally with men that the upper body is more, there's more weight here than there is in the legs. Whereas with most women or a lot of women, the leg from our pelvis and femur down is where our weight is and the upper body is the lighter bit. She's the opposite way. So she, her load is pulling the pelvis into a little bit of an anterior tilt, but only this much. So this is what she looks like with her load. When she's standing from her weight, she's going, she goes like this, and she's here, right? And then she does this. So what else? Oh, that was a real ab workout. What else is working? What else, is, what else is causing her to be able to go to the ground? So I've told you one thing. I've just said it now. And then Ava was talking about the other thing. Um, and Anya. What else? Her arm length, right? Is a, she's able to get to the ground. She's much longer. She's being held down there. And her back, her lumbar, her lumbar spine, she's literally using pretty much, it's called lumbar pelvic rhythm. It literally is, it's going to, when your pelvis and to, when you're gonna pick something off the ground, not do Uttanasana, when you're gonna pick something off the ground, your pelvis anterior tilts a bit. If your hamstrings are not so flexible, you'll probably bend your knees a bit. So you can get to hip flexion because we've got to go down, right? But at a certain point, your back has to round just because of the way the vertebrae are. The anterior tilt stops and you go into lumbar flexion. So she's using her spine to get down. But when she's seated, she doesn't have that initial load to get her into the position. So what we did yesterday, and I'll send you the video, is she got somebody to pull her. And of course, we can't measure the load of her body weight suspended upside down compared to a pulling load, but we added load and she pulls into exactly the same shape. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah. So it's exactly the same. Her hamstrings are as inflexible when she's standing as when she's sitting. Okay. But one has load and the other. No, and also the problem is if you don't get that initial anterior pelvic tilt for people exactly like Emma said, who is sitting down there on the ground, they don't feel it in their hamstrings at all, right? They will feel it in their abdominal muscles because they're trying to not fall backwards. Does that make sense? Have you, have you, what I want you to do, if you've got very flexy hamstrings, I'll get you now, Julia. If you've got very flexy hamstrings, I want you to do exactly what she does to experience what that feels like. So you just saw me come back now and my abs are, I'm going, ah, my abs, because you, they have to use totally different parts of their bodies to hold certain positions that we're dishing out in yoga classes all the time because we think they're so great or seated forward bends are easier than standing forward bends right? But the point being is, is that those people do not, it doesn't, they don't even register it in their hamstrings. All they're doing is feeling really, really unpleasant. Their lower backs are like, oh, tight. For dose, it's nodding a lot. Like you've had this experience for dose, you were saying earlier. Is that what it feels like for you? Yeah, but I can't, when I'm in a seated wide-legged forward bend, I can move like maybe that much forward and then I can't go any further and I also feel the contraction in the core my groin muscles do feel like they are being kind of pulled quite but quite uncomfortably um, but then standing up yeah I mean I can get pretty much my elbows to the ground so I'm not so, sure so what feels, I'm sure now <laughs> so what feels better for you the standing one definitely the, I find the, seated ones really tough the, the seated so so my, my, what I wanted to get across to you guys, and really, really, it's such a brilliant thing 
I think I said this to you already that I learned from my Iyengar teacher is that you know, BKS Iyengar always said, if you can't understand what's going on, do it. Like mimic your student, even if you've got super flexy hands, which I've watched a lot of your handstand videos and oh my word, there's some flexy people out there. I'm like, okay, all right. But you have to also, as if you're a teacher and now you're going to be an advanced teacher, have an experience of what the other person is feeling, the poor normal human being in your class is feeling. So if you're going to do, you know, bringing it to pose analysis, if we're doing forward bend poses and then taking it to forward bend sequences is like, you know, what, what do I do with people who don't have a big range, okay, of hamstring flexibility? Is that if I go, oh, okay, we'll start with nice seated forward bends, they, they, so think about if you wanted to do seated forward bends and somebody has not so flexible hamstrings, what could you change in a seated forward bend to make it easier for them. Juliet, you, I know you were going to ask a question earlier, so carry on and then we can jump back to that. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, on the video, she keep um, her shoulder close to the ears. So it's not good because it uh, rolls the back more. And I think if she keep the shoulders far from the ears, it will help, help to uh, keep the back straight, straighter than uh, the back already she, yeah, she had. This is another thing that we, when you get to the hamstring and quad section that you know, I talk about a lot, because it's such a big part of yoga, is that the way her back is rounding in that video is, it's uncomfortable for her, it's not nice. Everybody's back has to round to go into a four bend. And I always qualify that by saying there may be three people in the world that they don't, but you have to, your lumbar spine flexes, you have to round the spine to go into a forward bend. But, so we have to allow the roundness, I mean this up into the ears is probably not very comfortable either, but we have to allow roundness if we want the person to go further. But on the other hand, with somebody like Cameron, it is probably much more beneficial for her to either have the legs slightly bent or to stay and or to stay up much higher and keep a straighter back like you're saying Juliet because then and actually to be quite honest with you I love straighter backs for most people not because I think in any way it's protective of the lower back or anything it's because it actually really works your back muscles so I quite like that okay so we and to, me, to, to me the target of Pashimottanasana is not to reach the feet it's to keep uh, the back stretch uh, ah, as ah. much as possible. You see, and then, but then we have to go, it depends what we're teaching and whom we are teaching because we can, it can be both in Paschimottanasana. It can be. Yeah, it can be both, but if you can't, I think it's better to keep the back stretch because rolling the back could be very painful and. Uh, so then you need to also take it a step further. So it's like how much rounding the back is a problem. Mm -hmm. Like as a yoga teacher, then you have to kind of play around with that. You have to go, well, hang on a sec. There may be people that go that aren't as restricted perhaps as Cameron that have got still quite a distance between their torso and their thighs, but they can reach the feet, their backs rounded, and they may just want to do that for a bit. And they may actually get, for me, it would be, why is that pose in my sequence? If the pose is in my sequence, because I believe it is going to work with this elasticity around hamstring stretching, then I want the person to get towards their toes. If the pose is in my sequence, because I'd really like some lovely erect to spin your back muscles, all of this, good work straightening up, then I would want the person to be upright. And generally, if it was someone like Cameron, I'm like, there's a whole other load of things that, which Ava sent me a long thing about that we would have to work with to actually help her, if one can, help her produce a little bit more hamstring flexibility and be more comfortable in the pose, which would require you know, bending the knees, then you can anterior tilt a little bit more, all of those things. 
So it depends is the answer to all of those things. Claire, you've been waiting forever and ever and ever. Mandana, I'm going to get you next. <laughs> I wanted to drop two comments. Um, the one was, because you've brought it up before, everybody's different. I actually struggle in this pose myself. And I get into my hamstrings, but I hurt like a mother trucker in my hip flexors. So that's my two cents on that one. And then you asked, how could we help? So what helps me personally is I grab my roller. I sit on a roller to help me get that rounding and, and lengthening towards the feet. So just that slight elevation. And I suppose it helps my hips tilt in the right direction. And that's what I do. You're just sitting up like Anya was saying, you're just sitting up a bit and you're able to get a little bit of anterior tilt, which just helps you go further. And because we've thrown in a seated forward bend, but people want to go further. I mean, you can see with Cameron, she's like, but why, why can't I? You know, she wants to go a little further. So it's like sitting, I mean, it's hard if you're teaching vinyasa classes to bring bolsters in, but certainly if you're teaching, you know, some of you are teaching smaller classes, then you can definitely bring it in and explore and you have much more personal contact with your student and you can say, okay, go get your do a whole load of things there's a whole load of things that you can do that may or may not help and it will help but to what degree with with her back you know and the other thing is which Ava also pointed out was that you know she's I don't know Emma Emma's a physiotherapist so I can't I, I want I'm always very clear that I'm a yoga teacher but she's got I put Cameron into cat cow position, right? To look at how she moves her lumbar spine and her pelvis, taking hamstrings out of the way. And it looks like some kind of functional rigidity to me, like she can't round and flex that. And I'm not really great at it either, but I don't know enough about that, that I would do anything about it other than say, do cat cows a lot, go see somebody. But there's, there's, so there's a lot of things going in that big chain. Mandana, you were next and then Ava. Say hello, Mandana. I don't think anybody's met Mandana. Have you? You're on mute. Mandana. <laughs> there you go. Oh, no, you're broken. Can't hear you. Okay, she's just saying, <laughs> yeah, we can't hear. That's Mandana. She hasn't been able to come onto the live chats for a while. Okay, yeah, something wrong with your audio when you joined. Ava. Um, yes, just to come back to the point, um, I just because maybe you can answer my question on that. Could it be that the hip, the back of the hip, the sits bones, that they are very prominent so that when she's sitting, she would, the, the floor would be in the way of the anterior tilt of the pelvis. I mean, again, when we look at pelvis, we look at, so the issue, I'll show you guys. So she's wedged there as well. So this is the back of Colin. I really want a bendy skeleton, Emma, so you have to find me where I can get one. Okay, so these things at the bottom here, can you see, they almost look, can you see them? They almost look round, okay? This is where your hamstrings attach, right? Pretty much here. And people have the most incredible variation in their bones there. So some people have really, um, let's call them sit bones, sit bones that are really close together. Other people have really broad ones. Other people have really flat ones. All of those things. It could be, Ava, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Um, the thing is, when she was pulled, she was able to create that, you know, she's, it's almost like the, the load, the forces, overriding her natural thing so but de you know who knows definitely something might be going on because at first i thought maybe it's something to do with um rotation in the hip socket in different poses and then we explored it all and i'm like i i, I think i got her to mimic 
in both, like to try and do exactly the same rotation, exactly, you know, as much as I could do. So, yeah. So does everybody understand, Janine, you've got something to say? Oh, sure. I actually forgot to take my hand down, but the whole time looking at her, my first impression, and I, I would, I mean, Emma can maybe say whether I'm right or wrong, is that I think it's coming from her, her lumbar spine completely. It almost seems like she's got, if I can say her lumbar spine is stuck. So she doesn't have that ability to control or move the lumbar spine. So I think personally, it would be working on the back, maybe some physio to release whatever's stuck um, and work maybe on strengthening and mobility in that lumbar spine. More than the hips. I don't know. Look, you see, this is the thing. It's like, remember, we had that long conversation about yoga teaching. I am a yoga teacher. What is my remit? So we can definitely go, look, we've got all the tools in our, let's explore what is going on. But, you know, I know now a lot about stretching. <laughs> it's like biomechanics coming out of my ears. Okay. But, and it's very difficult to change these things, but we have to put in the remit of yoga teachers. So, so it's like, what, what can we do in a general, like being a yoga teacher and a physiotherapist is a totally different thing. But it's like, you know, I wouldn't personally, I look at Cameron's spine and lumbar spine and I see some functional rigidity there in terms of yoga moves, right? Exactly. I keep it in there. So I can make her move through that. But then what happens with Cameron is her, she, it hurts her back. Yeah. Ah, it's sore. And then I say to Cameron, go and see Emma. She's a physiotherapist. And I must say, her, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. try all of those things, but I, I stay away from going, it's this, it's the fascia, it's I this. agree with you 100%. I think she can't do it. Um, and you can clearly see that it is a restriction. And my personal, I mean, I would do all the things put bolsters, put blocks under her, give her a few little okay. maybe strengthening exercises to do. But looking at her, I would say, here's my physio, go and see what she says and then let's work with you from there. But I think for me, that's, that would be my answer. And also you have to keep in mind that she's a, a, an 18 year old girl, you know, who's at school. She just wants to do stuff. Like she's doing handstands and do, you know, and she's, you know, she tries with the bolster and then she forgets it and she's just, she's just a kid, you know, so it's, uh, I think we just have to use the tools that we have as yoga teachers to help the person and, and just question a little bit around, because we actually don't know what we're doing. Right, it, I mean, we really don't genuinely like I, you know. I can start talking about thoracolumbar fascia, and and it's like I know nothing about fascia. It, like you know, I go, oh well, foam roll will do this, and but actually, I don't know. And so I think as long as I stick to yoga and yoga movements, and ah, oh, you know, maybe her spine does look a little bit structurally rigid not structurally functionally rigid maybe i can do some twists maybe i can do that does it hurt her no what's going on with her hamstrings lie her on her back have a look at all the stuff that's within yoga the, the blocks the props the bent knees you know stuff emma you were going to say something yeah so um i think i think it's quite important what you just said um we are yoga teachers obviously i'm sitting with a different Tap on. <laughs> um, but I didn't see the video. I only saw the pictures. Oh. <laughs> I think what <laughs> so that might except just moving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that what I I agree. Um sorry, I think it was Janine. I agree, I agree with what you said. You think it's like a lumbo pelvic thing. Um a lot of people struggle with that um what you call lumbo pelvic dissociation. So being able to move the pelvis anterior posteriorly versus what's happening to the lumbar spine and if you're stuck or if your hamstrings are stuck if i had to call it that um you do tend to pull into that lumbar flexion like Catherine said so that flattening or that curving of the lumbar spine in the opposite way 
And I don't know where she has back pain, Catherine, um, if it's like on the spine itself or if it's just like muscular stuff. It's just muscular. She just goes like this. Oh, it's kind of stiff there, you know. In a yeah. <laughs> so that, um, so yeah, it's actually quite interesting. And I've seen a lot of patients, a lot of my patients that I do see are obviously in pain. So I'm seeing people that look quite similar to this. And I use yoga in my practice quite often. Um, but now I can't remember what the whole point of my story was. <laughs> it's good enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think um, I, I think it's quite um, important to bring in all those little aspects that we were talking about. Um, but most importantly, to start bringing in the anterior pelvic tilt, um, which is really hard to do if you've got really tight um, hamstrings. So things like that sitting on the block, the bending of the knees, what is our goal with um, seated forward fold? Are we trying to, like you said, round into the back? My only concern with someone who has, who easily rounds into their back like that and who have such tight hamstrings is that they are more at risk of injury, especially in the lower back. It's that constant strain on the, the back structures of the lumbar spine, that's somebody that might do a flexion and a rotation and might tear into a disc, even at a young age. Which, no, we can get into later, but yeah, that's what I want to say. I'll talk forever. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Claire will talk a lot about that in back care and things like that. We work at back, but that's why I, I just, for in terms of yoga teaching, hat on is that if somebody looks like that in a seated four bed, a question why you put them in a seated four bed, b, it's probably better for them to bend the knees and to lengthen the spine end of story right that's where we adapt for those people because it's an extreme flexion of the spine everybody flexes the spine when they fold forward this is what i want to be very very clear on it's like it's there's the extremes that we don't want to happen anya i think you were next um yeah sorry it's not a question from me um it's mandana typed in a question and oh, yes. i'm not sure if you've seen it <laughs> No, I haven't. Do you want to read it out? I have got my chat up. I like to look at you guys. Okay, no problem. Um, it says, I was just wondering, as we spoke about load and tension being good and beneficial, so would using a strap or a TheraBand be helpful? For forward bending? Uh, pulling, pulling forward. Um, could, could be, but you'd probably end up still, if we got our yoga teacher's hats on, we'd probably still have the knees a little bit bent and have the back more straight for her. It could help her a little bit. It be in a, to, it could help her to not have her abs on so much, perhaps, okay? But we'd still want to get her into an, a hip flexion so actually tilting the pelvis at the hips that's the key okay so it's like tilting the pelvis at the hips and we'd want her to be in that because then if you put somebody in that position so they can do it themselves or you could help them do it but you will see she will go from i can't feel my hamstrings at all to ah I can feel my hamstrings. There's a, I think there's when I did a, a adjustment video with Erin, my stepdaughter, who's the, so <laughs> lacks flexibility and is super, super tall as well. And the longest legs, she, she can have her legs quite significantly bent and only then does she feel a hamstring stretch when she goes forward. Anything else with it, so she's in posterior tilt, can't feel a thing, okay? so. Yeah, you could do both. Who is next in uh, for does? No, just to add to that, I find because I sometimes use a strap if I feel like like it, and it just I think it's a mental thing because it helps me to then relax, especially the core. And the the idea is like, oh, I am actually getting somewhere now. And then I think when I when yeah. my mind says like I'm getting there, then I get there. But that's actually, you know, it's something that it's so easy for us to be so arrogant as yoga teachers to go, well, that's just not right for you. 
and and yes, at extremes, we we want to be quite strict with that, but we can't take away from the fact that the person wants to feel like they're getting somewhere. You know what I mean? And they may not want to be the only person in the whole yoga class that has to bend their knees significantly and sit on five bolsters. Do you know what I mean? They might just want to go, give me a strap and just go bend your knees and then and then you feel like you're actually getting, you know, and you're not, you're probably getting quite a nice little hamstring stretch, I presume, when you're doing it. And you're not like completely yanking your shoulders out of their sockets to get there. But it, yeah, I, th I think that's a really valid point because it's, it, I, we've got people want to feel as though they are moving towards something, not, not the, the kind of sort of disabled person in the corner. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, for dose. You can't, no, that's so bad for you for dose. No, for dose. You know, it's, a, it's like Ava was saying last week, it's that the language around fear, of, oh, you're going to hurt your back. Oh, you're going to do this. But in for dose's case, it's not necessary. You can just go have a strap, bend your knees slightly, and off you go. And you, it's fine. You know, I hope I'm making sense. Claire. Yeah, so I don't know whether I am beating, uh, beating a dead horse at this point, but, and so my hat, which is yoga teacher, but it's also, I can't remember where I've learned half the stuff I've learned from, so just bear with me. But I teach also from my own body. So when I'm, so yoga teacher hat on, I'm also looking at, okay, so are her legs strong? Because when I think about, um, okay, I'm going into hippie spiritual stuff. Um, you know, women have a tendency, not you can't put a 100% blanket, but women have a tendency to be ungrounded. And our legs actually tend to be the least strong places. We carry heaviness in our legs, you know, trying to ground us, but not necessarily strength. So my own experience in the same move, and I, I have such compassion for Cameron because I also, your 18s, Takala Nisesini, could not move my body. It's so frustrating. But what I've learned in myself is almost the dysfunction of my lower body muscles. And so then it creates a a lot of difficulty around movement because, and again, I'm speaking from my experience. So what I discovered was, you know, your hammies are supposed to be actually quite strong muscles that are uh, enabling you to lift your leg up and down and whatever. For me, I very rarely activate my hammies, which causes my hip flexors to try and be this gigantic strong muscle, which they're not, which then send your QLs out, which send, I mean, you can't look at your body just saying, oh, it's the lumbar spine or it's, oh, it's the hips. In fact, it's your entire body. Something has sent it off and the entire body is going into a bit of a dysfunction. And so, I don't know, you can't really look at one little section and say, this is where you can fix it. Maybe start looking from the feet and up or, I don't know, from the center and out or out and in. But it's almost like you've you've got to be continually holistically stretching and strengthening the entire body until it's, it's almost like it's a little machine and as you get the cogs into place oh finally everything's working properly like it should or should not or whatever the weather but yeah that's my two cents you know whichever way you you want to look at it whether it's from a um, a science point of view or a more um, alternative health holistic point of view is that that's our personal preferences as yoga teachers but what we have to take that's our preferences are, and what that's what I keep saying is that my experience is not your experience you know my my experience in a forward bend is not a experience in a forward bend my experience is not at all like your experience my beliefs are different my knowledge is different etc big sort of thing so what I like to do is turn it the other way around and go what does the person want you know, it's like if I, so for instance, with Cameron, if I said to her, um, oh, Cameron, you've got functional rigidity, you must go off to the physiotherapist, she would just ignore me. <laughs> and I can't force her. You know, she's an 18 year old kid. It's just, so I'm thinking more, what does Cameron want? What Cameron wants is to touch her toes, okay? And then there may be some way that I, with my yoga poses, my modified yoga poses, can help Cameron move towards feeling, like Fido says, that she's doing something, that she's able to touch her toes. And I'm not saying that I think everybody should be able to lie flat and afford bed, that that's some kind of great achievement, because I, 
I have no respect at all for flexibility. It's like, give me strength any day. But the point is, it's, the, it's her experience. She, she wants, she's my student. She's my trainee. She wants to be able to work towards a pose. And if I turn around and say, oh, Cameron, you're, you're completely screwed. It's all of you. <laughs> like, we can't fix you. Like, I don't know how to go, go to Emma or maybe Claire for others. Now, she's going to be really despondent. And that links back to Ava's comment about, you know, fear of queuing and things that we talked about last week. So it's like, so I would much rather reframe it and go, okay, she's got terrible flexibility in her hamstrings, but, and she knows that. So we had to work through, she couldn't even kick up into a handstand. Her flexibility is so bad. <laughs> and her legs were like about a, a 10 meters away from her trying to kick up so we had to work or oh, but she wanted to do it so we had to then go okay so she's got to learn she can't kick up she's too far away she has to throw that long body up so we had to get start with her jumping the, we did a whole load of strength stuff but she wanted to learn the kick up so then we had to go okay you know what, we're going to teach you to jump up. But as you all know, jumping up is way more scary than kicking up. So it messed with the head. Then we got a jumping up in butterfly, etc. And it was a long journey, but she wanted to do it. And she, it gave her joy. And then she sends me videos going, look what are we doing? And like excited videos. And that, that for me, and this is for me as a yoga teacher, that's the stuff that is like, that's what I want to do, you know. So I want to just keep it to the yoga. Let's say not yoga, movement. Movement that creates strength and joy <laughs> at the end of it. So I will try my utmost to help her as long as it's not hurting her. If I think that there's anything going on and I do her lumbar spine and her overall movement, and I've said go to a physiotherapist, she's not going to, you know, she's, she lives at home with her mom, they don't have a lot of money, she's not gonna go, she might one day, but it's a, so I'm trying to keep it to where she just moves, because she just loves the movement. Does, does it make sense, but does. Yeah, Catherine, just to add to what you're saying about that, like if, if people told me to go to every physical therapist out there, for example, I probably wouldn't either. But I think you can also then run the risk of like, creating almost like a hypochondria where now every time you move, you feel something, oh, my back's gone, oh, my shoulder's gone, oh, my neck's sore, oh, this, all that. You know, it's, it can't be everything all the time. Like, you can't just do something. That's the thing, you know, it's like, you know, we, we talked about this last week a bit, and again, I keep saying Ava, but we, and I think Caro as well actually brought it up in terms of how we can create fear by cueing, oh, but you're going to hurt yourself, oh, but don't do that, your back is too round, you're going to hurt yourself, that we can create a, a fear chat around it and, and we're taking away the simple fact that the people just want to move so is it, remember we also had that conversation about new teachers ah. 20 different options for a pose so it feels comfortable and if you don't want to do it that way and actually when people go to yoga they want to be told do bridge pose if you can if you want to over danya rasna and we sequence for it and whatever but the point is they people are there because they want to do the yoga and they, they want to work towards a particular place. They don't want to be pathologized to be told that you're ill. It's, look, it's very dependent on settings. But if I go to a general yoga class, like, stay away from me unless you're going to help me do something, right? Don't come and tell me that, oh, you know, it, going back to alignment, which we'll have another fight about maybe on Thursday we can fight about alignment again. Is that yoga teacher going, oh, D Catherine, don't flare your ribs in forearm balance. I'm like, why? <laughs> it's, I've got poor shoulder flexion. But no, the alignment, you're going to hurt yourself. That kind of conversation around it. So it's, it's like that big spectrum. We said we, we can't, we agree, right, in our yoga teaching course that we can't know, we're not physiotherapists. We're not health practitioners, we're yoga teachers, except for Emma, she's, but, okay. So Emma can be in an environment in a small yoga class doing Hatha yoga and actually work with people on a much more um, physiological basis, right? But we can't, and also the people that will go to Emma in that environment are looking for something completely different to the people that are coming into a vinyasa yoga class. And, I'm, and it's also like freedom of movement, right? Like part of yoga is about finding freedom. So you just want your body to feel a bit more free. 
That's all I'm saying now. I think that's brilliant though, because it's the same thing as Cameron. She would like to touch her toe. She's got terrible hamstring flexibility. There's no way she's ever going to be able to do it. I, look, I shouldn't say never, but it'll get a little bit better okay, if she works properly. But she just wants to be in the class, in the moment, and feel, like Fredos is saying, feel that she's actually getting somewhere. And we can provide that because we know about straps and bolsters and bending knees and tilting anterior tilt, but we don't have to come up with a whole load of like, oh, you know, lumbar spine rigidity. I'm not going to tell her. She, I think she's got something wrong with her lower back. It's a it's not my job. My job is to go, uh, if you've got pain in your lower back, go see Emma. That's it. My job is she wants to touch her toes. Bend your knees, camera. Why are you doing this and trying to stretch? And, you know, it's not going to work. So, yeah. So that is my thing. Does anybody else have anything to say? Janine does on the whole Cameron thing. She's going to be so pleased when I, I'm going to send her this recording. <laughs> She's going to love it. Janine. Um, I think, yes, everything that you've said is absolutely correct. And it all depends on who you're working with and why they're coming. So in Cameron's situation, she wants to be able to do X, Y, and Z. So she's not just going to a yoga class and moving her body and you're going to let her move her body in, in whichever way feels comfortable for her. So she's particularly come to you and asked you, I want to be able to lean forward with my legs open, why can't I do that? Then it's, it's our responsibility as a yoga teacher to try and get her to be able to do that. If we see that there's something that's not working and it's not getting any better, then you can step in and say, okay, this is my advice. Go and see the physio. I think there's a little bit of a restriction here. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not um, diagnosing anything. And it's worked so well for me in my studio, you know, in my, if, if somebody wants to do something like touch their toes or get into splits or, and they have got a restriction and you do recommend alternative um, medical advice, I'm sure they're going to take it because it's something they want to do. They're not just coming to exercise or to move their body. So there's quite and a distinction between the two. Absolutely. And it's their choice. You know, exactly. It's that if somebody said to me when I started doing yoga, ooh, you know, don't do shoulder stand, it's going to hurt your neck, or don't, I would have just gone, okay, and gone and done shoulder stand anyway. You know what I mean? So I, I, honestly, I really would have. I would have, you know, people sort of be, people weren't fear mongering back then. And, you know, <laughs> they were also very bad at a lot of things back then, but they weren't fear mongering. And then, and, but to be quite honest, it's like Bado says, you know, she, She's not gonna, you can tell her whatever. She's like gonna go, I just wanna have my strap <laughs> and stretch a little bit forward, you, can yeah. open, you know? I don't want, don't, you know, I haven't got pain. I, I've only got pain, you know, and if you think about pain in a yoga context, so, you know, we talked about injuries. We can't know all of the injuries. So if somebody comes in and goes, I've got pain, all you can do is modify in a yoga context. So if Cameron says, when I stretch forward in a seated forward bend, my back feels a little bit stiff, you're going to create an environment where she doesn't go that far, right? Or she's got a bolster or a strap or something like that. Yes? Yeah, I also think that the difference with pain or discomfort in stretching is something that people get confused. So you have, you have, your hamstrings are going to feel uncomfortable because it can be quite nauseating and, and, and a painful experience, but it's not pain. It's just the uncomfortable feeling of your hamstrings in that position. So we've got to be careful in how we word what we're saying in a class. And I must say, maybe because I have um, I've only been practicing for a short time and I've only trained in the last year, my philosophy or my vision, according to how things are done, I, I'm not in that fear mode where, you know, older yoga teachers, oh, don't do this, don't do that. It's going to hurt this. It's going to hurt that. So I think that's, that's a big thing is, is it pain or is it just discomfort because it's, it's meant to feel discomfort in a stretching position? But even that is like, this is why I said to you guys right from the beginning, it, 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 there's 
not very many absolutes when we start to talk about concepts, right? That it, whether it's pain or what we should be as yoga teachers, they all, oh, there's no absolutes. And it's like, and again, to Claire's point, it's like, I'm, my experience is not the same as Claire's. My opinions, beliefs as a yoga teacher are not the same as Claire's. My experience of my body is not the same as Claire's. So then if we just take that simple statement that I can say as a fact, right? My experience is not the same as any one of you, right? It's not, it's just fact, it's not. So then I can't, if I just take that as my, it really is one of my abiding rules actually, is that then I can't say that my pain is the same as somebody else's pain, that somebody else's discomfort is my pain, that if they are doing a certain thing, then that might just be discomfort, but not pain. <laughs> and pain, as anybody who's even looked into pain science will know, is like a whole different field of like complication. So again, you know, we, like we talked about that as well. Do you say to people, don't go into pain? Everybody's different. How many, pe how many people here have actually pushed themselves into discomfort slash pain in a yoga class? <laughs> Good one, Roxy, me too, right? because we want to get somewhere or do something. But has it been pain where we've got broken? No, Discom so then when is it, where, where is Janine, there you go. So then it's discomfort, pain, it becomes complex, okay? It really, and again, I just don't go into op opinions anymore uh, in terms of, oh, well, you can't possibly be feeling pain or it's just discomfort. And also what I realized is, we as yoga teachers are we highly most of us are highly sensitive to what's going on in our body we do weird things right and we do sometimes quite slow and go oh i can feel this but the average person out there hasn't got a clue right so you can go okay they've they've never going to the stretching they've never ever it's stretched or stretched and with load right never in their life and they come to a yoga class and then they go ah oh, my bum my bum you know, my hamstrings are feeling it. Oh no, I'm injured. But we know, or we think we know, that they're probably not. They've probably just got delayed onset muscle soreness, okay? But we don't actually know, they might. Do you know what I mean? They might have got a tendonitis. So yeah, so it's a, it's a complex thing, right? Guys, it's already one o'clock and we just covered camp and <laughs> nothing else. So, I mean, sorry, two o'clock. All right. So on Thursday, we'll talk more about your questions. And I apologize, Claire, because Claire had a couple of questions there. Um, we'll talk more about your questions around actually talking about stretching. Okay. So please note them down. None of them, I was saying to a couple of you, there is no question that is stupid okay it's a complex topic you may just want to go ah, i don't even want to know anymore i just know you can't make a muscle longer that's fine and move on that's all good but if you want to ask questions please do and then on thursday i promise claire i will start with the questions that people have sent me okay does will that help okay all right thank you guys it went really fast for me i don't know what it did for you guys but thank you very much and i will see you on the oh and i'm only going to send out a zoom link maybe five minutes before i think unless i can fix my zoom whatever the hell is going on with it okay bye guys bye everyone bye, bye guys thanks so much catherine bye uh, thank you it was so <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Bidet.